Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. In today's video, we're going to be doing a final review of Denon's AVR X6400H 11.2 Dolby Atmos receiver. Now, before we get into the video, if you're in a home theater, audio and video, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right, guys, so I have had the Denon 6400 for the past two months demoing it here in Youth Man's home theater. Now, I wanted to get a receiver in that was 11.2 channels and had 11.2 channels of amplification. I wanted to be able to power all 11 speakers. So currently, I have three Klipsch La Scala's up front. I have four Klipsch RS62 version 2s for my side surrounds and my surround backs. And I have four Klipsch CDT 5800C version 2 in ceiling speakers for my Dolby Atmos speakers. So in this video, I want to share with you my thoughts about how the 6400 performed here in Youth Man's home theater. I'd love to share with you the things that I like about it, but I also have a few things that I wasn't so excited about. So stay tuned to the end of the video to find out. Now the first thing I want to talk about is features. This receiver has just about everything. Not only does it support 11 speakers and power 11 speakers as well as process them, it also has different things such as airplay built into the unit. It has Dolby Atmos processing built into the unit. It has DTS-X processing built into the unit, as well as Oro 3D. Now, in some previous models, you had to pay extra to get that Oro 3D. It usually was about $200 add-on to the receiver. The 6400 brings that into the unit by native default. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to install anything. And you certainly do not have to purchase anything additional so that's fantastic if you're into streaming audio such as spotify using title um, all different types of things airplay this unit has a ton of different options for you in that i found myself using airplay streaming music from my uh, iphone straight into the system and that worked out seamlessly super super easy to use now this receiver is rated at 140 watts a channel now keep in mind, this is two channels driven. So every set of speakers that you add to the receiver is going to reduce that number. Now I wanna throw that out there because unfortunately, manufacturers a lot of times won't tell you how many watts you're gonna be getting if you were to use this receiver to its capacity and drive 11 speakers. Now I wanted to find out for myself in my own home theater can an 11.2 channel receiver effectively power 11 speakers and do it well? And in my home theater, the Denon had no problem doing that. Now, I do want to share with you that my speakers, my Klipsch La Scala's, are extremely efficient. Now, Klipsch claims that they're 104 decibels efficiency. And what that means is Klipsch took a microphone placed it one meter or three feet roughly from the speakers. They fed the speakers one watt, a single watt, and at one watt, at three feet, the SPL meter registered 104 decibels. Now, if you want more details on speaker sensitivity and how that affects your system and how that affects sound, you can check out this video right up here. I produced that several weeks ago on speaker sensitivity. So that's a good resource for you. So I highly recommend after the video, maybe going and checking out that. But I mentioned that in this video because my setup is extremely efficient. In other words, it doesn't take a lot of power for my speakers to reach reference level. Now, if you have lower efficiency speakers, maybe you have some Martin Logans, Maybe you have some B&W speakers. Maybe you have Paradigm. A lot of those manufacturers have a lot lower sensitivity ratings. Instead of being around 100 dB, they may be around 89 dB. So you're getting about 11 or 12 decibels less in efficiency. So what that means is it's going to take more power 
from your receiver to reach reference levels. Now what I will not claim in this video is that this receiver will effectively power any 11 speaker system out there. That's just not a fair claim. I have not tested that personally, so I'm not going to claim that in this review. But what I can tell you in this review is the 6400 rocked this room with my clip setup. Absolutely phenomenal. I was able to hit reference with no problem at all. In fact, I watched some scenes with John Wick 2. Love that movie. Some great action in it. And I wanted, there, there's one scene in there that is my absolute favorite. There's just something about the dynamics from going super quiet to huge sound. And I wanted to see how the Denon performed. Absolutely amazing. Handled that with no problem. Now, if you have lesser sensitive speakers than I do, the Denon may not perform as well and be able to reach those reference levels like it does here in my theater. Now, the one great thing that the Denon offers is you do have pre-outs for additional amplification. So let's say you purchase the 6400 and you maybe at the beginning you have a 7.2 system. So you have seven main speakers and then you have your two subwoofers. So the receiver may be handling those perfect. They may be handling those fantastic and sound really great. But let's say down the road you decide to add four Dolby Atmos speakers. And at that point, that's a little bit too draining on the receiver. You can always purchase a two-channel amp, a four-channel amp, five-channel amp to remove some of that pressure from that amp and be able to allow the amplifier to only power a certain amount of speakers as opposed to all 11 speakers. Now when I first got the den on, one thing that I was really pleasantly surprised with is how easy it is to set up. During the calibration process, as you go through setting up using Odyssey, it walks you step by step through all the configuration. It shows you even how to set up your speakers. It gives you a lot of different varieties of how to set up speakers because not everybody's room's the same. Some people have a 7.2 system. Some people have a 5.1 system. You may have a 7.2.4 system like I have in here. So there's a lot of different variations. Some of you will use Dolby Atmos in ceiling speakers, while others may use front height and rear height surrounds. And so there's a lot of different variations, but the great thing is the Denon gives you a visual representation in the setup menu to visually show you which speakers you're setting up and how to set those up appropriately. Now one thing I want to mention about that just as a caveat is that not every setup in the menu will accommodate Oro 3D. So you have to make sure that you look down at the very bottom. You can see right here in the screenshot down at the bottom certain ones will have Oro 3D but certain ones will not support 3D. Now during the initial setup when I was configuring it for my room, I chose the option that had seven floor level speakers. So my front three, four surrounds, and then I also have four in ceiling Dolby Atmos speakers. And so I chose that option, but later on I watched a video by my good friend Techno Dad. Now if you don't know who Techno Dad is, go check out his channel. Incredible guy with a lot of content and a lot of knowledge in home theater. Now in his video, one of the things that he mentions is that Oro 3D is not supported with some of those options. And so one thing he recommended is if you want to have the ability to switch between DTSX, Oro 3D, as well as Dolby Atmos, one way to get around that is to use front height and front rears as the selection in your speaker layout. And so that's what I chose and it worked out perfect. So during movies, you have the ability to easily select which processing you want. Sometimes you may want to try to see what the Oro 3D sounds like. You may want to switch to Dolby Atmos or just allow it to natively select it by default. But you do have that option to manually select that processing on your own. Now my previous receiver was an older Onkyo receiver. Now it did not support Dolby Atmos and so I've been in my journey and if you've been a part of this channel for a little while, you've seen my progress 
heading into Dolby Atmos and my journey into Dolby Atmos. And during that process, one of the things that really frustrated me with my previous receiver is video switching. Many times when I would switch between one source to another, I would literally lose the connection. So my projection screen would be just blue. Sometimes I'd have to turn off the receiver, turn on the receiver, turn off the projector, turn on the projector to get that handshake to match up and for that signal to be shown. One thing I found out with the Denon, absolutely no problems there. I could switch between sources and every single time I got a picture on the screen, I got a video on the screen and it looked and sounded great. One of the things I really liked about this too, now I know this seems really, really minor, but it was a big deal for me. Think about this, when you're connecting 11.2 speakers and you've got various HDMI inputs and all of this, there's a lot of wires back there. And one thing I really value is cable management. One thing that Denon includes is some pretty handy labels for your speaker wires. And so you can peel these off, clamp them onto the speaker wires and easily be able to identify where they belong so that makes it super handy especially if you're replacing your current receiver with the Denon 6400. You can apply these labels to your current wires, unhook everything, put the Denon in its place and easily connect those back because they're all nice and labeled. So Denon, super appreciate that. That was a cool feature there. Now during my review of the 6400, the only thing that I did not like about it was it produces a lot of heat. Guys, I'm not talking about a little bit of heat. This thing gets legit hot. And it doesn't just get hot when you're watching a movie or listening to music. When I first got the unit, I turned it on. I walked into the kitchen, had to do some things in there. About 30 minutes later, I came back in and I noticed that it was hot and I put my hand on top of it and it was almost too hot to touch. It was extremely hot. Now keep in mind, this has a pretty beefy amplifier in it. And so it's got to generate some heat and that heat has to go somewhere. So if you end up purchasing the 6400, just know it's gonna produce a lot of heat. If you're putting it inside a cabinet, that's gonna generate even more heat and gonna trap that heat. In my cabinet, I've got a lot of open space but it still gets really hot in there. So if you buy the 6400, one suggestion that I would encourage you to buy is a receiver fan. Now there's a T9 that a lot of you guys have recommended. I personally have not used one, but I'll link it down in the description below so you can kind of check that out. If you've got a receiver that runs hot or maybe the 6400 that you've got and you want to make sure that you keep that cool, which will allow your electronics to last a lot longer, the receiver fan may be a great option for you. I know I'll be picking up one for myself in the near future. So overall, I believe that the Denon 6400 is an excellent choice for someone that needs to power 11 speakers or at least wants 11 channels of processing. The receiver retails for $2,200, and so I believe for $2,200 you get a lot of of features for that price point. It performs very well, sounds fantastic for movies, airplay worked extremely well, video switching, processing looked great. It's just an overall great all-around receiver. So if you're looking at picking up a 6400, I'll post a link to it down in the description below. You can check out the specs and see if it might be a good fit for your home theater. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions on the 6400, leave a comment down in the description below. Maybe you even already have the 6400 and want to share your experience with others that might be considering this receiver as well. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so that you'll be notified the next time that I produce a video. And guys, as always, you be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.